Human bodies have been studied and dissected for thousands of years, sometimes to extreme lengths. But have you ever considered donating your body to science? If you think about it, it is the ultimate act of selflessness, giving your body at the end of your life. I wish that people just knew the extent to which donated bodies can be used. We'll be lifting the lid on a world few have ever seen, taking you inside a facility where the dead generously support the living, helping them to learn, to discover, and even make life-saving medical breakthroughs. The Centre for Anatomy and Human Identification at the University of Dundee is one of several institutions in the UK that receive body donations. The main concern of people who do sign up for body donation is they want to do something altruistic. My mum's name is Jota. Christina. Christina Langenhan. Langenhan. Scringer. <laughs> Born in Germany in 1930 and surviving the hardships of a wartime childhood, Jutta went on to build a new life in Scotland where she raised her six children single-handedly. She got a lot of pleasure out of the simple things in life. She was always thinking about other people, even, even up to the end of her life. But by donating her body, that was a, a, a lovely gesture, you know. The university d described the people who offer their bodies for research as silent teachers, so she She's become a silent teacher. At Dundee, those who choose to donate their bodies have their wishes carefully recorded and held on file until the time comes. Good afternoon, Centre for Anatomy. We have every single receipt for every single body we have received. And we recently received our 3,000th body. These are the earliest receipt books. This is body number one, received in 1888. At that time, most of these people would have been collected from various Dundee poorhouses. In Britain, poorhouses were home to the destitute, the sick and the elderly with nowhere else to go. If residents died and their bodies were unclaimed, they could be handed over to the medical institutes for dissection. Surging scientific curiosity and the rapid expansion of medical schools meant there was a growing demand for cadavers in the 19th century. This had led to a sinister trade. Sometimes bodies were stolen, even murdered publicly dissected and displayed without consent. Things are very different now. So the UK is very much one of the probably few countries where the person's consent is the most important. People imagine that once we have a donor on site that we can do what we want with them perhaps, or they think that there's no control of what's happening to their body, but there's a lot of consent throughout the whole process. With people when they're signing up and they'll, they, they will literally say, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do with me. Stick me in a jar. <laughs> you know, it's not what we do. We always want the body here as close to the time of death as possible. Um, that just ensures that decomposition hasn't happened. That ensures the body's in as good of condition as possible. We have to be able to get chemicals to preserve them through their heart, through their arteries, into their extremities. The bodies are submerged in a chemical embalming solution for six months. This method preserves the cadavers so that the soft tissue remains flexible. Joints are able to be moved naturally. They can even bleed. They can be perfused with fluid to simulate blood flow. So they have deep red muscles, they have skin that is a realistic colour and looks like you or I. For medical students and researchers, donated bodies provide a safe way to learn and test without risking patient safety. Mum's view is very much that I'm, I'm helping the, the doctors of tomorrow. Yeah, and she was very proud of that, wasn't she? Yeah, she was, yeah. 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 One week we can have a company that wants to test a new robotic catheter. Another week we can have people trying to train AI that interprets radiographs um, using the cadavers. Another week we might have yoga teachers who wish to revise their anatomy. Dundee is a leading centre for thrombotomy training, a procedure that removes clots from the brain after a stroke. Using cadavers, they've pioneered a way to simulate the procedure, allowing clinicians to train in conditions that closely mirror real life. It's a breakthrough that directly saves lives. We do believe if someone's consented to donate their body, 
it's beholden upon us to do as much with that body as we possibly can. We are the ultimate in recycling. Yes, in some ways. The department holds an annual funeral service attended by families, staff and trainee doctors who have worked with the bodies. We are very aware all the time that every single donor is an individual with loved ones who supported this choice and who wanted to be here. We ask students to do readings, what body donation has meant to them and the relatives get so much comfort. Just the sense of relief that they all seem to have at the end of it is, is palpable. Our silent teachers, as that is exactly what they were, provided us with a text that no book could duplicate, no series of lectures could match, and no computer could simulate. And we will forever be humbled, forever indebted by their gracious gifts, and in our minds they will live on and on. It's actually quite comforting to know that because I, I still don't feel like she's gone as such because we didn't go to her grave. And I know that she's, she's not alive, but she's, her body's still there. That's, that's quite comforting for me. If a body donation means that someone is able to save a life in the future, then that is a huge impact. Everyone who does it is special. There's a story behind every single donation 